What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Kilholman Loch Gorm 2021. Stick around. All right, so this is a re-review that isn't really a re-review because this is a batch whiskey. We're looking at the Kill Home and Loch Gorm. Uh, this is a really nice drop if you like that peach sherry combo. Uh, I reviewed the 2020 last year and I absolutely loved it. So in a very timely fashion, now that it's 2022, I figured I'd finally get around to reviewing the 2021 version. This one is heavily peated at 50 ppm. It's a vatting of 24 sherry butts. And interestingly, in the 2020 version, they specified that it was exclusively Oloroso sherry butts that they used to mature the whiskey, whereas they don't specify that for the 2021 version. So there might be some other sherry barrels at play in this one, possibly PX, I don't know. Regardless, the barrels for this were filled in 2011 and 2012, which means this is a nine-year-old whiskey. And uh, I feel like the Loch Gorm has been getting better over the years. The older ones definitely had their fans, and I was one of them. I liked it. I've always liked it. But as the spirit matures, and as I guess Kill Homan sort of refined their techniques a little bit, I've noticed that the Loch Gorm has gone from a more rugged and pointed beast to a much more rounded and refined, mature version of itself. And I know rugged and beastly sounds good, but so does rounded and refined. It's just a matter of where your preferences lie, and honestly, personally, I'll take Kill Homan any which way. Uh, I absolutely love their house style. I did a video a while back where I ranked my favorite Isla distilleries. And Kilhoman was my number two. It was only beat out by Bunnahaven, which doesn't usually give us peated whiskeys anyway, so a bit of a gray area there. But yeah, I love them. I love the farmy elements in their whiskeys. I love the ashy elements in their whiskeys. I'm a huge fan of their entry-level offerings with like the Mocker Bay and the Seneg. I like the more premium stuff like our Loch Gorm, some of the special seasonal releases, and even their single cask offerings can be hit or miss, but when they're great, they're great. Also, we get a lot of transparency from them, not with all the releases, we don't get it with our entry-level stuff, but that's to be expected, but the more premium stuff like the Loch Gorm here, we have like dates that the casts were filled, the types of casts that they use, the number of casts, the PPM, all that nerdy stuff that we love. So yeah, speaking broadly, I'm just a huge fan of these guys. And if you know me, you know I like my sherried stuff, so traditionally this one has been one of my favorite offerings from them. Uh, certainly the 2020 release was one of my favorites so far. So let's see how the 2021 follows up. Let's jump into our review, see what our whiskey is all about. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Well, Kilhoman never disappoints for specs. This one comes in at 46%. It's going to be non-chill filtered and our color is natural, as always. Nice natural color. I really like this bottle. I think the dark color scheme goes nicely with the dark whiskey inside. I like the label. I like the squat bottle. I like the little medallion that's worked in here. Beautiful presentation. This bottle is a five out of five for me. We've got non-chill filtered natural color here. We have a little tag around the neck with plenty of information. Uh, 17,000 bottles made, 24 sherry butts used. The whiskey is a minimum of nine years old. So we have a great look and a great amount of information. It doesn't get better than this. I did not add water. Let's try the nose. Very sherry forward. Yeah, so similar to last year's in the sense that we have that really lush, thick, almost like syrupy sherryness to it. Love that. We have some uh, cherries, some plums, some earth, candied apples. We have forest berries, we have peat, we have ash, we have grilled ribs and kind of like a mesquite barbecue sauce. Very inviting stuff. Let's try the palate. Mm. Um, thick, full texture. So we have like a, it's a rounded measured arrival. And then we head straight into those like goopy, thick, rich sherry notes. Um, earth, peat, definitely a lot of like black forest cake in here. Really nice. Um, we have some blackberries, dark chocolate for sure, hazelnut coffee, and then we're back to those grilled ribs and a mesquite barbecue sauce. And now the finish. Mm. Peat, molasses, sherry, 
um, bonfire smoke, ash, <laughs> sun chips, like, yeah, just sun chips, um, barbecue, cherry wood, medium finish. Okay, so I was blown away by the 2020 version of this stuff. I think I gave it something like 91. I absolutely loved it. So I was really interested to try the 2021 version of it. And I wasn't sure if I'd like it. I mean, I knew I'd like it, but I didn't know how much I'd like it because again, batch versions, you never really know what you're gonna get. Things do change. And this one in particular has had quite a bit of evolution since the first dropped back in like 2013. So is this one different? Yes, it is, slightly. Um, now I did in my 2020 bottle well before I picked up the 2021 version, so I am gonna be working off of memory here if we're comparing. And of course that always gets a little bit dicey, but in my mind, this one goes even further in a sherry direction. In fact, I think it's safe to say that this is a sherry bomb at this point. Older expressions had more of like peat and sherry in equal measure. Uh, the peat's still in here and it's not a background player, not at all. It's still very much a part of the character here. But I would say the main hook in this whiskey is going to be the sherry and that texture. The style of sherry in here is largely the same. I mean, they might have changed the recipe slightly. Well, I mean, it's a batch whiskey, so they did change the recipe slightly. But um, no, this one, again, it's interesting that they don't state that it's exclusively Oloroso matured, whereas the previous version did. I don't know if there's PX in this at all, but if there is, that wouldn't surprise me too much. I'm sure it's still mostly Oloroso, but I do feel like this one is a little bit sweeter this year. Uh, don't worry, it's not too much. It's never cloying, but it's probably going to help you appreciate this whiskey if you do have a little bit of a sweet tooth. Again, I'm speculating here, but because they didn't say exclusively Oloroso matured, I'm guessing there's a little bit of PX in here. So do I have a preference between the 2020 and the 2021 version? Not really, not really. I like them about the same. Uh, the 2021, no, sorry, the 2020, I scored like 91. Uh, I'm going to bring that score down to a 90 and I'm going to match that score. I'm going to give this one a 90 as well. So I do like them about the same. So yeah, still a huge fan of this stuff. It's fantastic whiskey. Uh, one last thing I want to touch on here is the texture. We have that really syrupy texture to this. I think that gets overlooked sometimes. The mouthfeel with this whiskey is incredible. It's very thick and viscous and mouth coating. So yeah, I think if you got along well with the recent Loch Gorms, you're going to get along well with this one as well. I think if you're a big fan of peat and sherry, you're going to get along with this one. I think if you like beautifully textured, thick whiskeys, you're going to get along with this one. There's plenty to like in here. Again, this whiskey isn't cloying, but it might help if you do have a bit of a sweet tooth. Um, listen, there's a lot of great whiskeys that come out every year as batches, and usually I'll just check in on them from time to time. Uh, this one, I think I'll do it every year. You know, if it changes, I'll tell you. If it doesn't change, I'll tell you. Either way, I'll be happy revisiting it. So value is good. I think this is a worthwhile whiskey, but it is a little bit dicey, especially when you factor in some of their other releases. So they have an entry-level expression called the Seneg, and it's been getting better and better every year, and it's been getting darker every year, more increasingly sherried. Now it isn't as good as the Gorm, but in my market it's about half the price. So you kind of have to weigh your options a little bit. It doesn't have the depth or the complexity or the richness or the mouthfeel that we're getting here, but it's still a remarkable whiskey, especially when you factor in the price. So I think if you want a more budget-friendly option, definitely go for the Seneg. But yeah, if you want to up your game a little bit, I'd still say the Gorm is worthwhile. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That's always appreciated. Now, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Lock Gorm 2021? What were your thoughts? Finally, down below in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.